Oh my god, this is so sick, dude. This is so cool. Oh my god, no way. Wait, huh? Netflix has been heavily invested into the growth of its anime catalog. Cyberpunk Edge Runners just won Anime of the Year, and The Way of the House Husband animated a series many thought was impossible to do. Netflix clearly sees an opportunity in the anime genre. They have been steadily increasing their library of titles over the past decade, with no signs of stopping. In fact, they're doubling down on their investments into the genre. But there's one thing standing in their way. When it comes to anime, Crunchyroll is by far the go-to streaming service. With the largest library and simulcast for a majority, if not all, seasonal releases, the platform dominates the space without question. Crunchyroll, by all means, has a monopoly on the anime industry. Every new series calls Crunchyroll its home, and with over 5 million paid subscribers, the streaming giant is almost untouchable. However, everything isn't smooth sailing for the platform, and if anything, Crunchyroll is entering 2024 with everything to lose. Crunchyroll has been dealing with with controversy after controversy, and for years now has seen a steady decline of public approval. After a lawsuit settlement in 2022 regarding the alleged sale of user data, alongside making anti-consumer decisions at almost every turn, Crunchyroll is seemingly taking advantage of their position in the industry, at the detriment of the anime community as a whole. The biggest issue with Crunchyroll is that they are well aware that they own a monopoly. They can be as greedy and anti-consumer as they want, because at the end of the day, what are you going to do about it? Obviously, the answer is to just pirate, which, let's be honest, honest, who does it nowadays? But that's when Crunchyroll shamelessly pulls the come on guys, support the studios and the artist card. In theory, subscribing to Crunchyroll and watching the shows legally does support the studios. But there are no statistics on where this revenue actually goes, and realistically, it's probably going to the big studios with most likely very little, if any, being kicked back to the animators actually creating the series we enjoy. Crunchyroll is also notoriously hostile to voice actors, and does everything in their power to undercut and underpay the artists that work on these shows. However, However, the most blatant middle finger to the anime community happened just recently. On February 8, 2024, Funimation formally announced the end of their service. With its final day in operation in early April of 2024, the service will fully merge with Crunchyroll, giving the platform total control. The nail in the coffin, however, was a complete removal of the Funimation digital library. Picture this, you go to the store and you see your favorite anime series on the shelf. Inside the box is a digital code, which you paid extra for by the way. You would redeem that digital code on Funimation, which allowed you to download and watch the series online or off. Now, Keep in mind, you paid for this digital copy. It wasn't thrown in out of the goodness of their heart or some special bonus. However, on April 2nd of 2024, every purchase you made will vanish into thin air. Now, the legality of this is dependent on user agreements in terms of service that nobody reads anyway. But the morality of this is beyond horrendous. The discussion of digital ownership has been a hotbed topic for the past couple of years, and now Crunchyroll has added more fuel to the fire with their utter disregard for the consumer. Obviously, Crunchyroll is in the wrong, but there's a reason why they're making the choices they are money. Sony purchased Crunchyroll from AT&T in August of 2021. At the time, Sony was already the owner of Funimation, one of the only true competitors in the space. However, even at the time, Crunchyroll was the go-to place to stream anime, and everything else was always seen as secondary to its reign. Sony's solution? Just buy it. Why even bother to compete when you could just purchase the competition and create the monopoly we see today? Anime is a booming industry. Over the past 20 years, it has become one of the largest industries in the world. However, the genre has seen a majority of its worldwide growth over the past five years alone. The anime industry as a whole reached $22.5 billion in 2020, and by 2032, the global anime market may be worth around $53 billion, which is more than companies like Ford, Spotify, and DoorDash. With an industry on track to more than double, we're going to start to see more and more companies try to get their piece of this delicious animated pie. Enter Netflix, the streaming giant who held the crown for 20 plus years is doing everything they can to make their mark. Knights of Sidonia was the platform's first entry to its original catalog. Released in 2014, the series was released to mixed reception. The series was succeeded by a variety of releases, some good and some not so good. Netflix had their first major hit with the release of Seven Deadly Sins, which gave Netflix all the proof that they needed that anime was not something to ignore. Series like Violet Evergarden and Little Witch Academia were released to high praise yet nothing really stuck until Netflix truly hit their stride with Devilman Crybaby and Agritsuko. These two shows truly solidified Netflix as a serious contender in the anime space, but Netflix wasn't satisfied. 
they wanted more. Baki, Beastars, Great Pretender, Doro Hidoro, Netflix could not be stopped. These shows didn't cut any corners when it came to production value, as Netflix is known for their deep pockets when it comes to their first party products. The movies made by Netflix were finally paying off, and in 2020, they revealed that their anime audience had more than doubled. And over the past three years, Netflix realized that like their other content, the true key was in diversification. Their original productions had seen success, but for Netflix to break major ground, they would need the best of the best. Demon Slayer, Hunter x Hunter, One Piece, Naruto, Death Note, Vinland Saga were all added to Netflix's arsenal. Even though these titles were not exclusive to Netflix, they were crucial to their success in the space. Over 50% of all Netflix users watched at least one anime in 2021, and with a subscriber count of 209 million at the time, that's no small number. With Netflix adding massive franchises alongside the releases of their originals like Cyberpunk Edge Runners, Comey, and Black Clover, Netflix Netflix is looking unstoppable. Fast forward to 2024 and they're kicking off the year with one of the most well received seasonal anime with Delicious in Dungeon. If it's any tell of how things will continue, then Netflix is in for an amazing year. In 2023, Netflix's biggest success by a landslide was the One Piece live action series. And this isn't their first attempt at live action. In fact, their track record was pretty hit or miss. The One Piece adaptation, however, was their golden ticket. The live action series garnered 19 million views with over 145 million hours of watch time. The show was ranked top 10 in 93 countries and number 1 in 73 of those. And the show was an instant hit and surpassed series like Wednesday and Stranger Things, but this is where Netflix makes their biggest move yet. The One Piece anime is notorious for its, lack of a better word, horrible pacing. Everybody knows it and it's no surprise, but it's not like you can remake a series that's still airing. Right? Well, Netflix thinks differently. After the massive success of the live action adaptation, Netflix decided that their next big first party release was going to be The One Piece, a seasonally released adaptation that by all means has the ability to be the definitive method to watch the series, and of course, exclusively on Netflix. The show is already in production, and with Wit Studios behind the animation, alongside Netflix's almost limitless budget, the show has the opportunity to completely change one of the biggest franchises on Earth. Netflix is already the second largest platform for anime in the world. Depending on the success of the remake, we might see Netflix tackle other series like Naruto or Bleach, just to name a few. But all of their moves indicate their desire to come for the throne. But we all know who wears the crown. So now we look at the bigger picture. And as it stands right now, Netflix can't compete one-to-one -one with Crunchyroll. However, based on how things have unfolded over the past couple of years, we could potentially see something flip. The fact of the matter is that Crunchyroll is on the decline in terms of public opinion and favorability. At the same time, some can argue that within the anime community, Netflix is on the rise. Obviously, there won't be any major changes overnight, but if things continue to trend the way that they have been, it's impossible to rule out a potential meeting between the two trajectories, meaning that by some unforeseen series of events, Netflix might overtake Crunchyroll in terms of public opinion and favorability. Netflix also has 20 years of experience in the streaming space, so their ability to manage and upkeep such a large library of titles would be nothing for them. Netflix also boasts an almost flawless user experience as well as being accessible on pretty much every platform you can think of. All of their pieces are put in place and they're moving ever so steadily towards Checkmate. Netflix also recently added the addition of simulcast for the egghead arc of One Piece. It wouldn't be crazy to assume that Netflix is perfecting their service to launch the addition of more seasonal releases. Netflix famously unveils entire new series with all the episodes all at once, which has been a major detriment to some previous titles in the past. If Netflix is able to facilitate a more standard weekly release schedule through not only their service, but simulcast as well, it's only a matter of time before more studios look at Netflix as a worthy platform to host their new releases. From the addition of mainstream franchises accompanied by their soaring first party catalog, Netflix is truly solidifying their push to not only rival Crunchyroll, but to take the crown for themselves.